welcome back. So you everybody. Take it off. Yeah, welcome back, everybody. Should do a little sponsorship at ASMR. Oh my gosh! Yes. Oh, I didn't even hear it. Dang. The girlies will. Don't worry. Oh, the girlies will know. Okay, sweaty. I gotta go. I have I have work Sw- to do. Sweaty can stay. <laughs> uh welcome back everybody to another Hello. episode of show and tell with tone and tone it's definitely a different episode you know you can tell you can tell because in the last episode that bugles bag was getting plowed through and now it's barren there's still some bugs in the cannon <laughs> i'm not going to be able to eat any though because i can't mute myself long enough to chew <laughs> But uh, so yeah, so While talking. So here we are. Here we are again. Oh my gosh, this has nothing to do with anything. But have you watched sure. Game of Thrones? The, the, like the new one, the prequel. Well, I just finished the prequel. But have you watched the original Game of Thrones? I did watch the original. Yeah. <sighs> okay, good. I have somebody to to text about it because I mean, yeah, I know- you can. Uh, my memory, my memory is a little sparse. Like I was pretty much watching it. Um, I watched it like in 2013 and 14, and then live till it finished. Ooh. But um, flex. No, it's because I was in grad school and a loser. Dang. I didn't have anything else to do. Dang. So yeah, um, you can text me about it. I watched it. It was fun. I'm glad I watched it once. Okay. Well, I just started it last night, so that's where I'm at. Um, uh huh. Special. Anyways, um, something else that that you could listen to um, is the Game of Thrones House of Dragon podcast, but that's not what we're here to talk about today. What are we here to talk about? We're here to talk about one of the greatest pranks I have ever pulled. convincing you that i listen can i just tell Luka. can i tell the story can i just tell the story please tell the story because you will tell it a hundred times better because i was trying to explain it to renee and i was simultaneously going through all of the um accompanying media and I couldn't breathe because I was laughing so hard. So I'm like sitting there gasping for breath, tears streaming down my face, showing her these tweets. And she's like, wait, this is, why is this funny? I'm like, it's, it's so funny. So yes, please tell the story. Okay. So we're showing and telling music, right? And what I'm bringing for show and tell is the super deluxe edition of Wilco's um uh seminal album yankee hotel foxtrot now you're gonna recognize this cover yes because i you know those, listened to fire you know those buildings. Well, yes I don't you know, know those, those buildings. buildings they're down by the river they're by the Trump tower yes the corn Blue. buildings and um you know wilco is famously a chicago band didn't know that but now and that's an important detail it's okay so i've been i've been pretty heavy into wilco recently this deluxe edition came out a couple of weeks ago and i've been slowly but surely enjoying it because it's massive and i'm going to talk about it in more detail later but um i probably would have not been inclined to talk about it on the podcast if it weren't for the best prank i've ever been pranked by which occurred um merely four days ago okay oh my gosh it seems, it seems like such so long ago it's i know it really truly does seem like such a long time ago um friday <laughs> you know it's like could have sworn it was the middle of last week but anyway okay yeah. so an important detail for the fan um ben so ben yeah um, shout out ben. wilco is um is often referred to i think i think lovingly as um a dad rock band you know, yeah. it's pretty mid tempo. Not, you know, there's some squibbly diddly guitaring, but it's it's pretty, it's pretty chill. Historically, Wilco formed as a band called Uncle Tupelo, that was um, Jeff Tweedy and um, a guy named Jay Farrar, and they split up, and Jay Farrar went and did his own thing, and Jeff Tweedy went and started the band Wilco, mm-hmm. and um, they were they were just straight up like a roots rock Americana, two guys, two acoustic guitars. 
and like a drum kit. Um, so when they when Wilco broke out, they were alt country. You know, okay. like your favorite your favorite Wilco album, Summer Teeth, very much, and you know, kind of an indie rock country fusion. Um, Yankee Hotel Foxtrot, part of the reason this is such like a you know, quote unquote important album is because YHF. it was where they just fully blew the lid off, you know, their sort of label as alt country. They literally were dropped by their label. Um, who said that the album had no hits now luckily their label was cool and like released their masters to wilco wilco put their album out on their website in 2001 remember the internet was not a big deal in 2001 i was gonna they say yankee year, so t- 2001 is, 2001 okay. they put yankee hotel fox Pre or up on post the internet 9/11. For, um don't worry you you uh, keep explaining and i'll i'll look up that um yeah in it, it, they are intertangled 911 and Yankee Hotel Foxtrot um really in a way in a in like a weird music writing narrative way yes um so you know that's that's the deal with Yankee Hotel Foxtrot it really blew the lid off you know what like like genre you know and there's guitar and folk music and weird noise rock it's just a really like experimental album um, you know, not like Radiohead's Kid A, which came out earlier in 2001, that really blew the lid off genre, but like it, it, it really is a challenging listen. And um, this came out September 18th, 2001. Mm. This is, yeah, week so of... literally, literally one week after 9 11. It's been yeah. owned. I do love that was a good joke. Naked ladies. That was a good joke. We stand together. Yeah, they're a Canadian band. They have no empathy about 9 11. Um, <laughs> so, so Yankee Hotel Foxtrot. Okay, comes so out. Yankee Hotel Foxtrot blows the lid off. And, you know, now when you listen to it, um, well, t- uh, 20 years later, it, um, it, it, it's not, it's, it's hard to know. It's, um, just how dramatic it was as a shift in in music now. I, I think context is hugely important because you mm-hmm. know that it like goes back to like, I mean, kind of whatever. Like things were things were important because of the context of like thinking. For example, like Rakim is known as like one of the greatest rappers, but if you listen to him now, you're like okay what the fuck's so special but you have to like also put yourself in that place what did everybody else sound like at the time what was the world like at that time and so like exactly. for, you, for you to say that like it's a hard to listen to like even even listening to um i mean you sent me those couple songs and i really liked i don't i don't want to i don't want to say it wrong but i think it was firefly hummingbird hummingbird <laughs> Hummingbird, yeah. Hummingbird, I I liked, and it was. I had a hard time even being like, I don't know what this genre is, because it sounded right. indie rock, but then it also like There's some of the little, some of the drum rag, kick yeah. and all, all of that. I was like, this is, this is, I so I get it. It's it's a little yeah, it's out there. Now it's important to point out that while in its moment it was this radical shift, it the you know the long line of history has sort of yankee hotel foxtrot is like a very safe record for like 35 year old men who wear seersucker shirts and new balance sneakers who like have a quirky carbonated water favorite you know it's like a very normal i mean i'm not i don't mean to discredit wilco they're extremely they're like a really good band yeah but like but but they're for a, a certain genre yeah, their lane has very much shifted into kind of like easy listening dad rock. So that's mm-hmm. that's that's kind of the overview here. Um, okay, so last week, um, I was kind of toggling between hard rock and Wilco, um, and I'll talk more about what hard rock I had been listening to if we make it to the end of the episode before I finish the Wilco joke. Um, no, nope. and I tweeted, I tweeted on Friday. I can tell I'm deep in my bag right now because dad I keep bag. listening. Dad bag. Thank you. I'm deep in my dad bag right now because I keep listening to the slower versions of war on war. 
in the Yankee Hotel Foxtrot box set. And it's important to note to our viewer that doesn't isn't familiar with Wilco, War on War is like this very kind of mellow but peppy like acoustic song. It's not really a ballad on the album, but on one of the CDs that has like a studio outtake version of War on War, it's this very somber like just Jeff Tweedy who is the lyricist, lead singer and and main guitarist in the band just kind of him and his guitar and, you know, just the sort of weight of the world in the song. So yeah. I tweeted that you replied, damn, that's how you truly know. <laughs> and I, I was, and, just, and the funniest <laughs> part is the way you just read it is how I imagined saying it. <laughs> but because we weren't having a conversation, about it. I have the luxury of your voice or my interpretation yeah. so I read it at face value and I thought does he know this song I mean you know we just on our last episode of show tell you talked about how raps your go-to genre and if you're not listening to rap music you're listening to podcasts neither of those are alternative country or indie rock or will go yes. so I, I was a little suspicious so I thought um <laughs> I thought, I, so I responded. I said, it's funny because you could just be tooling on me or an unexpected fan of Will. And I, again, will put up the cover. You know, it's all Fox Drive features the corn buildings. You know, they're like a, they're like kind of a big deal in Chicago. Yeah. And you're a guy who I think gets a lot out of appreciating the local scene. You know, the familiar customs. Yeah. Like you, when you're in Detroit you, or when you're in Michigan, you drink Fago. You know, yeah. when you're in New York, you eat pizza. When you're when in, in Rome, do as, do the, as Romans. the Romans do. So when in Chicago, don't use a toilet. Listen to Wilco. Well, you can't or, use the toilet in Chicago. There aren't toilet seats. But I get your, you know, or like yes, you're yes, in yes. Indiana. When you're in Indiana, you <laughs> quickly leave Indiana. Um, yes. So I thought maybe maybe this guy like got into Wilco. And I mean, I know you're like a big hip hop head. And I've never, ever known you to listen to anything else. Yeah. But I mean okay stranger things have happened um so that was my response and, it, and you wrote back you wrote back yo summer teeth is my fucking shit bro can you read that the way you typed it so the way i type and i would also love to give the context of of my um of my side of this happening because i thought it was so i was like kind of having like a shitty day like i think me and me and they had just gotten into like not like a not like a, a huge argument but like we were not happy with each other at that point in time so i was like you know kind of pissed off i was on my way to work and i was like fuck like whatever and i saw your tweet and that was earlier that i had responded damn that's truly how you know so i was like oh okay completely forgot about it and then once you replied, LMAO, it's funny because you could be tooling on me. I was like, oh, he doesn't know that I'm joking, that I said that facetiously. And he just gave me the in to go all in on this. So when I was, so immediately after you had said, LMAO, it's funny because you could be tooling on me and, or be an unexpected fan of Wilco, I had no idea what any of those words in your first initial tweet meant i didn't know what war on war yankee yankee hotel foxtrot even was so when you said wilco i was like all right here we go so immediately started googling googled wilco what is wilco wilco is this band i was like sick went right to title and i was like i need to find an album but if i pick the first album that's kind of easy to be like, oh, he obviously just Googled the first album. He Googled what was Wilco's first album. Lie, prank, blown right there. So I was like, okay. And I can't pick the most recent album because that's also the same. So I was like, let me pick a sweet middle. So I, <laughs> so that's where I landed on Summer Teeth. And I was almost going to like pull a song and... Uh, like just a random song from there, get a lyric and type it out. And then I was like, no, that's too in depth. He'll also know that I'm messing with him. So I replied, yo, summer tweet, summer teeth is my fucking shit, bro. <laughs> now, let me tell, 
Let me tell you what I was thinking when I read that. I thought, okay, if Tone didn't know Wilco, he'd Google Wilco. And the first thing he would see is either Yankee Hotel Foxtrot or their newest album that came out earlier this summer called Cruel Summer. And he would think, that's too obvious. So maybe he would look up their first album. He didn't say that. That would also be too obvious. The I mental thought, okay, chess maybe, that we were playing. Maybe is he's insane. gonna maybe he's gonna go back and look at the discography. He'll see Wilco has a self-titled album. He'll just say that. Or he'll go back one album, which is <laughs> Ode to Joy. And he didn't do either of those things. In fact, he picked the mo- second most recently reissued Wilco album, which meant two or three years ago, Summer Teeth was pretty big. Yeah. And it stands oh, to reason. So that would have been that would have been like when I moved and to it Chicago. It stands to reason that a guy who had just moved to Chicago might check out the mega reissue of the seminal Wilco album, Summer Teeth. <laughs> so I thought, I thought this fucking kid likes Wilco. Why in the world haven't I ever heard of that? But then I fixated on one word in the tweet tone. Oh. And it was when you said summer tea. And it was the bruh. It was the bruh. Because it's like a guy that likes Wilco doesn't say bruh in a tweet. But then I thought maybe that's a misdirect. (laughs) (laughs) And I just, I was absolutely. This is the best episode of the podcast we've ever done. I want you to know. Can I point point something out to the fans that I'm just now noticing? Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> I tweeted, I tweet, I made the original tweet at 5 12 on Thursday. You replied, damn, that's how you truly know at 8 30 on that same day. At 8 34, I replied, it's funny because you could just be tooling on me or be an unexpected Wilco fan. And you didn't make the summer teeth comment until the next day. Wow. You brought, you brought it back. So I had a whole night's sleep to think about whether or not maybe you were into Wilco. And no. I had like forgotten, which meant that the idea, I had like incepted myself. The idea was in my head and I didn't know where the idea that maybe you liked Wilco came from. So I accepted it. So ultimately I was like still unsure. So I replied and I said, this is like the Google map image text. You have to be fucking with me. Which a little bit of context. Would you like Google- to explain what I am referring to when I say the Google Map image text? Yes. So the Google Map image text, um, out of nowhere, one day, Tony texted me and said, what's your address? And like, yeah, you said, what's your address? No. I said, is this still your address? Oh, okay. Important thought- distinction. Anyways, Tony asked for my address and I immediately was like, yep, looks good. Or I sent him my address, whatever it was. And maybe two, three minutes later, I get a picture from the street looking up at my apartment and I was working. I was someplace not home and I was like, holy shit, you're in town. Like, and I'm like sitting there like rearranging my whole day i was like okay well like i had to do this 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 today but like that can all get moved like if tony's in town like we gotta hang like i we gotta at least do something get pizza or something and so i'm like sorry losing my mind like yo, 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 what, what's your plan what are you doing and there was just like nothing for a little bit you just let me sit in it and i was like oh shit i was like okay he's I'll be there in 10 minutes <laughs> yeah like I, and i was like okay i'm around the corner like just give me a minute response that was a google maps view you fucking idiot i'm not in chicago you think i wouldn't tell you when i'm coming to chicago so i was like wow that like rocked me because i I didn't mean to harm you i didn't mean to harm you well i went through all of those emotions so fast and i mean you already know how how fast i'm thinking all the time so it was on like crank that shit up to like 12 so i was like "Ooh, that was a good one but you know what the whole wilco thing wasn't even a response 
but that is that's the Google Map image text. That's, that's the Google Map image text. Okay, so I said that, and here was it really sold the deal that fully tortured me for the duration of the prank. You <laughs> you replied, you replied, and this was on this was the same day. This was at three forty later that Friday. You said, "Seems like you're just a gatekeeper," and <laughs> with the Kermit, Kermit Kermit with the umbrella going. Yeah, there. Let the girlies see it. <laughs> now, it's important for the fan, fa- for fan of the podcast to know that in a former life, I used to be just the biggest, most pretentious douchebag, hipster, music gate. Oh, you like that band name for their album? Oh, you know. Yeah. And I have I have worked so so hard to escape that, and ironically wilco is a band despite being like a very cool hipster approved band that i like skipped when i was cool because they didn't seem cool so Uh, you don't realize how how just sharp the knife of that tweet was because it was like i have been trying so hard to like abandon oh, that, no. that like shitty ad. I mean, I'm not mad. I deserved it, bro. Well, um, I think and I think... more, more, more necessary context is that the Taylor Swift album had come out on Friday, and I went out of my way to I think not be what... too cool for it and to like not geek and be like, oh, Taylor Swift, whatever. Listen to Carol King instead, you fucking children. Like See, I was. That's what tw- did it for. That's what did it for me because I saw, I think, like, subconsciously in the back of my head, I think I subconsciously planned this prank because I saw you going hard tweeting about uh, the Taylor Swift and the Jeps, both of their albums dropping. And I was Mm -hmm. like, okay, I know he's going out of his way to like, and I think you even made a made a tweet, like you tweeted something about it. It's like I'm I'm not trying to gatekeep Taylor Swift. Like if you enjoy it, you enjoy it. And and your whole, um, you know, recently you've been on your there's no guilty pleasures thing, which I love by the way. I've been thinking about it a lot. And That's so my was, whole thing these days. So I've been like, so all of those ideas are like swirling in my head, and so I was like, the gatekeeper. And yeah, I mean, that, also, also how much we joke about the gatekeep girl boss gaslight summer. Dude, that's right. Yeah. Okay. So the, the no guilty pleasures thing that came into the, the public consciousness on October 18th, I tweeted, I know I'm still the real me because I still really like childish Gambino's camp doesn't get more authentic than that folks. Okay. And then like, you know, whatever through the rest of the week, uh, you know, I tweeted, I can tell I'm deep in my day bad bag i tweeted uh the advantage of my ungodly hours the ungodly hours my stupid dogs like to keep is occasionally that now i have time to listen to both the new taylor and the new carly before getting my psl this morning um instead of tweeting that i thought the album was shitty i said going to be curious to see how the album is received um i tweeted getting whiplash from going from taylor swift to wilco demo cds yeah, dude, I was I was just in, I was just in it, and you absolutely lacer- You just lacerated me with that tweet. And at that point, you you and you know, and listen, this is how you know you got my ass. There is not a reply. I did it's, not reply to that tweet. And, and and so, at that point, I knew what I was doing. At that point, <laughs> I was like, because the whole like, damn, you truly know that was like, whatever. That, that was, was like, like a whole a, day earlier at this point. Yeah. So this was yesterday. I was like, okay, whatever. This is like, Tony's going to brush me off and be like, wow, what the fuck? You don't know what you're talking about. Or <laughs> LOL. But you took the bait that I didn't know was bait. And then the summer teeth, that's where I was like really, really nervous. That was like the point. I was like, if he takes this, then it's go time. And so then when you, when you say that I had to be fucking with you, I was like, okay. Now he's hooked. He's in. I got him. I was like, I need the perfect gif to go with this. <laughs> because the gif was the kill shot. And it was. <laughs> that was absolutely. 
that was that was a murder you committed an absolute felonious murder on me so, so i leave campus i'm at campus at this point yeah, i leave so two, campus so 242 is when that final tweet gets fired off i sat in it for a little while and then i left campus i'm in the car i had picked up pizza i'm driving home from school i'm driving home from school i got pizza in the trunk i'm in i'm in absolute gridlock traffic i'm i'm steaming i'm heated i look at my twitter note i look at my twitter notifications and remember that you that like i see like the definitive you know i mean i had seen it right away but yeah. you know i just see that the definitive murder shot once again and i'm like damn i gotta know so i called you which and and I said, hey, and you were like, hey, I'm busy. What's up? I, I can't be on the phone. And I was like, dude, just shut up. Do you like Wilco? And you L- were like, literally, you'll never know, bitch. Literally and then hung up. yelled at me. No, dude, he, he for, for the viewer, Tony. Dude, literally, I'm in my office. I can't yell. I know. I Also, I think Renee's on a meeting, so I probably shouldn't yell. But Tony <laughs> literally yelled. It was like, no, shut up. I need to know. This has been driving me crazy all day. And I, so I'm driving, I have navigation up and I'm like about to walk into rehearsal. So like, I already didn't have enough, didn't have time, but I was like, oh fuck, I got time for this. So I <laughs> unplugged my phone because you, call, you, you FaceTimed me. FaceTime, yeah, I FaceTimed you from traffic, so, which is so not I, a safe activity. We don't condone it, that. And it couldn't pop up on my phone because it was plugged in. So I unplugged, turned the screen on. Just so I could have a little shit eating grin and be And like, you did, you did, you son of a bitch. You'll never know. And hung up and I felt horrible. I felt like a super villain in that moment. I was like, I I get it. I get villains in this moment. And and then uh yeah, so calling you. Uh- <laughs> And then you called me, you called me back and said it was all just a prank. And we talked on the phone for five minutes about how funny it was. That was really just, I mean, hey, tip of the hat to you, sir. That was one of the, some of the most fun I've ever had being pranked. Oh my um, gosh. Cause ultimately harmless, you know, no yeah. one was hurt. I mean, I did get in a car accident because of it, but <laughs> oh <my laughs> the, I mean, the guy's in, uh, he's in the ICU, but he hasn't died yet. That's okay. We'll send him I, out. I, I didn't get in a car accident. I, I, I know. Yeah. Oh so oh can I tell you, can I tell you a little bit about this record? Please do. Actually, can we pause for like 30 seconds? I've been chugging water and also yeah. we're about to get cut. Are, Are we really? Out? I didn't even see the 10 minute mark. Well, we're about to hit 10 minutes. Uh-huh. Um, I and I don't want to cut you short on talking about your your album. So would you want to cut and re-roll? You mean like like end this recording and then start a new one? Yeah. Yeah, if that works for you. Sure. Yeah. yeah That'll yeah. give me a chance. I'll I'll grab a couple other props. Perfect. All right. And we'll be right back after these commercial messages. Welcome back. Shit, hold on. Here's your thumbnail. No, I want it to be lower. There we go. Got it? Got it. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Welcome back. Hey, what's up, bro? No. Not much, it's bruv. That's my impression of a uh, Skepta. What's up? In it? In it, bruv? Thanks, in it. Thanks. Choose. Choose. You know, that have, sounds good. That's, they, that's cool. They have a whole day where they make decisions in the UK. In it, bruv? Choose day. A little dad joke for that dad rock. Hey, yo. So speaking of dad rock, I feel like I told this whole story about uh, Wilco, but I haven't talked about Wilco. At all. Can I, t- can I tell you about this? Can I tell you about this this particular Wilco album? Yes. And then love- can I tell you what I've been listening to recently? 
Yes. Is that too much of an indulgence? No, that's what okay. we're here for. That's that's what so, this is. This is what that's what this is included. In the super deluxe edition of Yankee Hotel Foxtrot is um, the 2022 remaster of the album Yankee Hotel Foxtrot on CD. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is a CD set for dads in their cars. Um, the second thing is um, the American Aquarium studio demos of the uh, Yankee Hotel Foxtrot album. And um, this is where um, the sort of more Americana, slow jam, folksy, um, war on war lives. Okay. Also included is the um, Here Comes Everybody studio uh, renditions of Yankee Hotel Foxtrot, just totally different mix mastering um instrumentation on a bunch of these songs including now that song that you liked hummingbird yes doesn't show up until 2004's a ghost is born but they had been working on it during the sessions for yankee hotel foxtrot so there's a prehistoric version of hummingbird on that also included the third variation of yankee hotel foxtrot the um, unified theory of everything which is kind of like a more experimental electronica influenced mix and master of these songs. Yeah, I think that was the mix of Hummingbird. Yes. That you sent me. Yes. Also included. And War um, on War. Yeah. Oh no. Well, that's because yeah. that's a good that's a good war on war take. Um, here are uh, a disc of demos, of drafts, and instrumentals. Holy shit. So so is there any vinyl or is this a CD? No, this is a CD set. C- CD only. Um gotcha. this is a this is a um 3 hour recording of a radio session that they did on Sound Opinions on WXRT Chicago on Shout out September 18th, 2001, which includes a really haunting in the studio acoustic rendition of war on war and the song ashes of american flags which you can imagine seven days after 9 11 took on a real yeah. a real significance so this is this is a this is a cool disc this was kind of the whole reason i wanted the mega deluxe and you said because you said this was which version this is the three hour this is this so this whole disc is just like three hours of them on the radio Mm-hmm. interviewing playing songs talking about 9-11 and talking about the backstory between the album and then discs seven and eight holy shit this is a lot of discs are um are recordings of a show they did in st louis on july 23rd 2002 and uh, i just i just listened to these over the weekend and um i finished my journey through the yankee hotel fox Trial. How long did it take you to? I guess that, how long did it take um, you to listen? It's, it's well. This came out in um, uh, the last weekend of September, and I have listened to at least. I started listening to it. I didn't listen to it exclusively. Yeah, but um, I mean, I started listening to it at the beginning of the month. Not bad. So, so I mean, it took it's a lot. It's a lot of content. You know, some of it's yeah. kind of redundant. Um, it's I'd say it's a, uh, you know, it, it's it's for like a, a, you know, not to be gatekeepy, but it is it is the mega deluxe is for real heads only. I am. Um, it was, <laughs> there was a pricing error on Amazon, so I got it for like seventy five percent off. I won't say how much that was, but it was seventy five percent less than it should have been. I'm gonna look. I'm gonna look. Right um, Don't worry, I, I won't air it out. <clears throat> that's fine. Rachel doesn't watch. So, um, also included in the set is like a nice photo book, and then an interview between, um, or a conversation between members of the band, and um, an essay about the about the album and its legacy that I'm really excited to read. And I think I don't want to be a nerd, but um, I think I'm gonna write uh, about teaching. And using the Wilco album as a text in in uh, in teaching, because it's like you know this is because really this is just like four CDs of rough drafts. 
Yeah. That, and it's, oh. you know, it's pretty easy to like, it's like, a, you know, music and demos and studio recordings and live, live tracks are like a good way to explain how, the you know, process. The, the writing process, you know, cause it's not like, it's not like revision isn't correcting errors and making it better. Yeah. Right. Because you could say that like, you know, the American aquarium or the unified theory of everything of war on war I think are better than the one that made it onto the album. They're not, you know, they're just different. So um, I'm thinking, I'm thinking there's something there for that. But um, yeah. anyway, that's the Yankee Hotel Foxtrot Super Deluxe. I love it. It's it's huge. It's like obscenely large. It's I think the book is like 12 and a half inches by 12 and a half. So it looks oh, like vinyl. A, oh, it's a book. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's so cool. I thought yeah, and C- then, the and whole then, like, time the I thought CDs, it was a vinyl. Yeah, and the CDs kind of nestle. You see the little slots. That's so cool. Yeah, it's so it's, it's I mean, you know, That's it's great. obscene, but it's like a pretty cool artifact. Um and I'm not I'm not even a big fan of Wilco, although I think like my experience of going through this has has taken my casual enjoyment and really I'm I'm like a true Cranked believer now. Um but with that being said, that's certainly not all I've been listening to recently. And oh. I will I wanted to um I wanted to sort of survey um all mediums if i may of course so um i think up first we're gonna stick with cds but um i've been really i've been revisiting a favorite from high school um joy division and this is their debut album unknown pleasures and this is a collector's edition and uh you know in it is their debut album unknown pleasures and uh also included in the slipcase is a live recording from their first tour um you know just a good kind of bootleg and um i don't want to say a lot about them because they're a sad band with a sad story but uh you know they're uh if you like grimy british hip-hop and you think wow i love the britishness and i love the intentional unpleasantness um you might check out joy division um but they were they were a pretty big deal for me when i was in high school that is giving me uh just the the cover of that cd is giving me arctic monkey vibes interesting and and aren't they british too they are and i think the arctic monkeys would tell you that they owe a lot to joy division um you want to know a fun fact about joy division that you'll appreciate it yes their second album is called atrocity exhibition where have you heard that name before a la the late night personality host Danny Brown. That's right. Before he was a late night personality, he was a rapper. And one of his better rap records is called Atrocity Exhibition. And he 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 name checks Joy Division in the title track on that album. Oh, that is sick. Yeah. So now it's not all CDs and it's not all punishingly upsetting, heavy, you know, heavy yeah, music. Give, yeah, give us some good vibes. What good vibes? Oh, you unfortunately, got? I don't I don't have I don't this isn't no exactly good a good this isn't exactly a good vibe, but I've been listening to one of the Jack White side projects, the Dead Weather, um, who are a great just trash rock, sleazy 70s, ugly rock and roll music. So this is um, this album in particular is the special um, Jack White fan club edition of their second album, Sea of Cowards. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a live record um, on the album's release day. They oh, God, pl- they that. they played it. They played the whole record um, at the Third Man Record Store in Nashville and recorded Ooh. it d- directly to vinyl. Oh, so sick. this 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 pressing is literally um, Jack White's mouth to this record. Um, wow, his lips and uh, to vinyl's yeah. ears to your and ears. it's and it's cool because you know the record when you're recording live to an LP, you you know you're limited by the you know, no, no literally way. the amount of the the amount of space on the wax. Mm-hmm. Now the album is forty minutes long, so live it's about forty five minutes. So they ran out of room. So included in the collector's pack package is a seven inch single of the encore. <laughs> That's see, like I I wish more artists were like Jack White because I love that whole like I love every time you talk about Jack White. All of that, like extra effort that goes in, all of that sh- is so 
fucking cool. And all mm-hmm. of the artwork and like, so when you say it's a side project, what do you what do you mean? Like that's another band he was in? Well, yeah, it's another band that he's in. And I think, you know, you you could say if you wanted to be fair to his other bands, and the white stripes aren't really a side project. They were his thing. And then he went solo parallel to the white stripes he was in the rock on tours which is a super group um you know it's made up of musicians from other semi-prominent indie bands mm-hmm. um i i call the dead weather i relegate the dead weather to side project because um they have been really inactive they tour they released an album in 2009 and then 2010 and they toured both of them and then they released um a series of seven inch singles of new mm-hmm. songs from like 2013 to 2014 2015 i mean and then in 2015 they they like released an album that that i mean it was an official album release but it was just those songs it was the singles that it they was had all been of releasing this... okay yeah and now prior to the album release the singles were only available to like the fan club um and you know you can go to best buy right now and buy a copy of their third album dodge and burn but they never toured it i don't think you can i don't think best buy selling cds well, anymore okay okay you know what i mean um so they they haven't really been active since 2015 and they really weren't active since 2011 gotcha so okay. that's what i mean when i say side project it's just not his main gig i don't think very few people would say that the dead weather is their favorite jack white thing though I would, um, because it's just this great, just dirt ball, scumbag, leather jacket, skin tight, black jean, wearing rock and roll, just cigarette on stage rock. And um, it's not pleasant, but it's fun and it's dumb as hell. And I dig it. I dig it. It's cool. It's like a cool, it's like cool music to play with your windows down really loud. Similar to UK rap. Yeah, people get the fuck out of your way when you're playing the dead weather in your car. <laughs> so so that's your good vibe or that's your That's my good vibe. I mean, it's not, you know, it's it's kind of, it's fugly music, but it's fun. It's fun as shit. And fugly that's music. and you know, I, it, last last episode I was talking about how I go through seasons. Yeah. Um of music right now I'm favoring stuff that's dumb and fun. And mm-hmm. that's, you know, like a lot of metal, a lot of kind of grimy rock and roll like early Red Hot Chili Peppers, um, you know, Jack White live recordings and listening to a lot of those, the, the Dead Weather stuff. The Joy Division shit is pretty heavy. It's not dumb or fun. Mm. Um, when you, when so you say been, heavy, you mean it's like de- like content, content-wise content it's depressing? Yeah, and I mean, I don't want to bring the vibes down, but um, the lead singer of Joy Division kind of famously committed suicide. Um, um literally the night before their first u.s tour uh, and then like that that album um oh their second album is not called atrocity exhibition it's called closer and atrocity exhibition is the first song on it but um you know the the subject matter of the songs it's lyrically you know kind of dark stuff all about alienation and you know it's hard to not project like the dude's mental and physical health issues onto the narrative of the music. And I mean, you know, there's like this whole record, this whole album that came out like after he died and you know, how are you going to listen to that? And it has a song on it called isolation. How are you going to listen to a song on isolation by a band whose lead singer killed himself before he even came out and not, yeah, you know, like not project, not not feel the weight of it. Yeah. But the good news is, the very lighthearted pop music of Taylor Swift and Carly Rae Jepsen, which I've been listening to a lot. Did you Palette cleanse? Did Did you like the Taylor Swift album? Because obviously, um, I liked it. I liked it at first, but it actually, um, I did. It didn't. It didn't have a lot of staying power. Like it was pleasant the first time I listened to it. Sorry, I'm checking to see when my appointment is. No, I don't no, know no, if no. it's. At, I don't know if it's at three or if it's at at three thirty. No, if it's a totally, three, I gotta go. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 you're totally good. Uh, the only thing I was gonna say about the Taylor Swift album was that obviously Nay has been playing it like crazy because she's is is it at three? Yeah, three thirty. Oh, okay. Um, so she's been playing it a lot, and she was telling me that a lot of people have been saying it sounds like Taylor Swift found out she could swear, so she's swearing a lot. 
So mm-hmm. for that reason alone, I want to give it a listen because yeah. I think that, that was is so funny. Yeah, and that was one of Rachel's complaints of it. Actually, was that it? Sounds she says it sounds like stupid and inauthentic when Taylor Swift tours. <laughs> like she said, it sounds like a freshman English student who just discovered that his teacher is cool. Yeah. So, freak yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's it's um it's good. I like it because it doesn't have the, like one thing that I've appreciated about the rollout is that you know she just went so far out of her way to say like these songs are fiction they're short stories they're characters that i made up it's not about me and jake gyllenhaal it's not about me and harry styles it's not about me and zane you know just all the Mm. you know all the dumb personal beef that some people really enjoy and other people find really distracting and totally immature she was like these are just songs that i made up these are 13 made up characters in made up songs that i made up i'm i'm a writer of fiction and like I, I really appreciated the way that like unburdened the songs. Mm-hmm. And I stand by that. You know, it is a breezy listen, but it also lacks bangers. So it's there a little a... it's a little boring. I it's a little boring. This is the last thing I'm gonna ask about about the Taylor Swift album. I have all I have told I have 30 more minutes. I, I have <laughs> we're all on borrowed, we're on borrowed time, bro. 30 minutes. How do you feel about the sexy baby line? Because that bad. Shit, I felt bad. It makes my skin crawl hearing even just saying it made me feel gross. I mean, I'm looking forward to some like, you know, red pill Trump dipshit calling Taylor Swift a groomer, but um I'm waiting for the Halloween I mean, costumes. <laughs> it's gonna yeah, be like I sort of the deli- the deli- <laughs> The lyric that I'm the lyric that I'm hung up on is um I am not dressing for my friends I'm dressing for revenge, which is just so silly, you know. And it's kind of it's you know it's like cringy in a fun way because it's because it's just like oh Taylor so like... embarrassed you know that's so embarrassed <laughs> like just what a fucking embarrassing thing to say you know like oh yeah you really showed us idiot you know. <laughs> But um, but you know what? Good for her. Um, I, I'm sure it'll be successful. It broke Spotify yeah. the night it came out. I think. Um, I'm I'm sure it did too. You know, it's yeah. inoffensive. And I'll tell you this: my biggest surprise is that I like it a lot more than the two records she produced, the Bony Vare and the guys from the National. You know, if I was gonna like a Taylor Swift album, it would be Folklore Evermore because I was gonna say like, those hipster I, I indie the... like indie hipster musicians made those. I mean, but. Go figure. I'm like, you're like, yeah, Jack Antonoff is cool. <laughs> He's an unknown producer that I enjoy. <laughs> like, uh, you know. And then how's um, the how's the Carly Jepsen album? I got to give it another pop because I only listened to it the one time and it was at like 4.45 a.m. And I remember it not grabbing me at all. Did you, and did you stay for up? Similar, for the... Well, I didn't. I mean, not a, no, the dogs woke me up. Oh, okay. And then I couldn't woke. fall back asleep. So Desi, how about this? Desi woke up at 420. And when I looked at the Sick. clock to confirm that, I looked back at her and I said, nice. And she <laughs> winked. <laughs> so then I took him out. I took him outside and it was Poppy like exactly over with the blunt. Yeah. And, and it was, was like, yeah, she was like, whoa. <laughs> and um, it was exactly cold enough to wake me up fully while yeah. I, we were outside. So then I was just up and I'm like, well. I guess I'm going to put my AirPods in and, you know, study. <laughs> so, um, Crazy. yeah, but it didn't, it didn't really grab me. And I mean, I'm nervous. I'm like nervous to go back to it. Cause you know, I'm a big, I'm a big Jepsy. Is that especially, clear? is that Jepsen fans? Well, some of the Carly Ray Jepsen fans call themselves Ray cysts. Oh, no, yeah, no, I, no, I, no. I obviously want to distance myself from teenagers in Canada that have never heard of racism. Oh, but... my God, that's horrifying. Are you serious? Tell me your joke. No, that might that might be a meme. Oh, my God. That's I mean, I've seen I've seen that on the Internet, but it might be a joke. Oh but um, I am um, it. No song on it grabbed me. I think it's all really mid tempo. And you know, I don't want to. I don't want to be like, yeah, hey, Carly Ray, you're not allowed to develop as an artist. You can't change your sound. Just make, right. make, make, make. Call me maybe every time. Make call like, me maybe. Part I don't know. Two. Her last album was like really energetic. You know, really fun. Um, 
and I, I mean, I think I think it like explored a more mature sound palette. Like it wasn't like Call Me Maybe too, but it was just a little bit more like dedicated. Yeah, um, it was just a little bit more fun than the loneliest time. But I guess a record called the loneliest time is maybe not trying to be fun. I don't know. I have to give it yeah. another shot. Gotcha. But mm-hmm. you know, I I know it with great interest in the car on Friday. I was listening to like, you know, Joy Division and Wilco. Which is so like I and the dead weather. So I, I mean, you I, know, I don't I, I don't know like... how you, I don't know how you do that. I can't like if I'm on something, I have to like stay in that vibe, but like to go from Joy Division to Wilco. I mean, I guess some of the Wilco well, songs. You wanna like... you wanna know my you wanna know my secret? Yes. CDs. It's a unit, you know. No, it's a music, and when it's over, I can either play oh, again or I can okay. put in a different CD. You well, know, I, that's why that's become my like favorite way to listen to songs recently. Um, I, I know, really throw on a CD, having a CD player in my car. Yeah, I it's the only thing I like about my car. Um, yeah, CDs are great, dude. They bang, they bang. I have my little collection over there on my, my bottom shelf. Um, it's not just vinyl in the office. Oh, look at that. Oh, I see you, Anderson Pax Malibu. His only good album. What's Never that? listened to it. I bought it because I, I was trying to be cool. I I think I popped it in, didn't listen to it. This is uh Culture One, the best. Oh, Migos I was gonna album. say, is that Amigos? I see, I see um, I see uh it's a vibe underneath it. What's that song called? Pretty girls listen to trap music. Uh is it pretty girls? I think it is pretty what good. What an inc- what an incredible album title, by the way. Oh my Isn't that what it's called? It it is called uh Pretty Girls Listen to Trap. Just music. A, just oh, like here a, we go. Wait. It's like a this is the important page. Here, I'll go back because you're not looking. Sorry, I'm sorry. I got an email from Liquid Death. <laughs> Look at that's that's three too many DJ Khaled CDs. This is this is an old one too. We de- I think this is the one that has uh oh my gosh all all I do is win on that's the only thing I could imagine buying uh like an older DJ Khaled album for I'd really like to get um a all roots. I do is win 12 inch vinyl single oh, there you go I do fuck with the roots the roots are sick um, yeah I like the roots oh what the fuck this one's like sticky but yeah um. Dude, love it. Um, should, I could talk, I could talk all day. We and you know what I didn't even mention? Mention. I got cassettes going. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll you save said, that for another time. Do you listen to that in your car, or do you have a Walkman? No, I have a um, CD tape player in my uh, literally right behind the computer in my office. So, I, you know, I thought people were like buying cassettes as like a hipster thing. But I was at Urban Outfitters one day and uh-huh. I like picked up a fucking Walkman and I was like, you can buy these. I'm like, okay, so I guess yeah. cassettes are a viable, like. I mean, option. they sound really bad. They're cheap to produce. So they're easy to, they're easy to produce. I think is why people are into them because it takes two years to get a vinyl record made, but you can make 10,000 tapes like yesterday. Yeah, you know, we could I, cut, we could make a show, best of show and tell with Tone and Tone tape, and sell it for $5, get a thousand of them for, you know, 200 bucks and sell them. Oh my God. Like that. We, we could be the first podcast. The only, the first <laughs> podcast available on cassette. <laughs> we should 100% do that. That would be so Dude, funny. Sponsored by Liquid Death. <laughs> People are just going to be like, why the fucking market is are these guys trying to go for i would brought to you by dads i would 100 percent buy a walkman if we pressed an episode on to cassette i would fucking i would that's money well spent anyways i feel guilty that my music episode was twice as long as yours that's okay i had a great time in the first half of yours um what happened in the second half no, just, like the second half was very informative, but the first half was just re- oh, we were was rehashing the, the fucking prank. I like <laughs> the best. Uh, I think without without further ado, 
Um, we'll catch you next time. Tony, I'll catch you. I've been Tone. Have a nice day, and I've been Tone. Okay, can we pretend the recording stopped? I have to tell you something.